In this unit circle survival guide, we'll find the exact value of secant of 19 pi over 6 using the Sark method. So here's an outline of the Sark method, and Sark's just an acronym to help you remember each of the steps and keep them in order so that your answer is accurate. So S stands for sketch the angles terminal side. A stands for the acronym ASTC so that you can know its trig functions are positive in each quadrant and then determine if your final answer should have a positive sign or a negative sign. The R stands for reference triangle, so you'll find the reference angle, special right triangle and coordinates that go with that. And then C stands for calculate the trig ratio. So if you do need help with any of these individual steps, um, as we're going through, if something just isn't sitting right with you, um, I'll post a link to a playlist that has videos on all of these basic unit circle skills. Um, so be sure to check that out if you're needing some help with any one particular skill. So let's find the secant of 19 pi over 6. And we want to start by sketching the angle's terminal side. So we have a positive angle, which means it's rotating counterclockwise. And one thing to notice about this angle is that it's more than one counterclockwise rotation. So we know 2 pi is a full rotation. Um, rewriting that so that it has a common denominator of 6, we'd have 12 pi over 6. And of course, 19 pi over 6 is greater than that. So to sketch our angle's terminal side, it's going to be helpful to find a co-terminal angle um, that'll share the same terminal side is what that means. And to do that, all we need to do is subtract 2 pi. So we'll have 19 pi over 6, and we'll subtract 2 pi written with that common denominator of 6, so 12 pi over 6. And we find that 7 pi over 6 is an angle that's co-terminal to 19 pi over 6. Okay, so if we sketch that terminal side, that'll be what we need. We just get there with less rotation. All right, so here we go. We have 0. We're rotating counterclockwise. A half rotation would be pi or if you want to think about it as 6 pi over 6, I like to do that because then it's easy to see that 7 pi over 6 should just be 1 pi over 6 past that. And here's the terminal side in quadrant 3. And now that we have our angle sketch, we are ready for step 2 where we use ASTC and determine our sign for our final answer. So think all students take classes. And this little saying, this acronym, helps us know which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So starting in quadrant one, we have all are positive in quadrant one. Sine and cosecant are the only ones positive in quadrant two. Tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrant three. And cosine and secant are the ones positive in quadrant four. So we care about quadrant three. That's where our angle's terminal side is. And we're trying to find the secant of our angle only tangent and cotangent will be positive in quadrant three. So we know our final answer is negative. Let's make note of that. And the reason we go ahead and determine the sign of our final answer, whether it's positive or negative here, is so that for all the rest of the steps, we can just assume coordinates and triangles and angles in the first quadrant. So we'll only deal with positive values and we eliminate um, just one other possibility for errors with forgetting a negative sign um, or that kind of thing. So we've already taken all that away. We know our final answer will be negative. Okay, so in step three, we can now find our reference triangle. So first we need our reference angle, and that's just the amount of rotation from the terminal side to the x-axis. And so when we were sketching the angle, we already actually found that, um, more or less. We said that 7 pi over 6 is just 1 pi over 6 past pi, or 6 pi over 6. So that's our reference angle, pi over 6. And if we write that in degrees, we know that we are dealing with the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So that's the one that has the longer leg horizontal and the shorter leg vertical. So we know our coordinates are going to be square root of 3 over 2 for the x and 1 half for the y. And now we're ready to calculate our trig ratio. So we'll use those coordinates from the previous step. We know that the secant of an angle on the unit circle is 1 over x because it's the reciprocal of cosine. And cosine is just the x. So here's our x coordinate. And we'll calculate 1 divided by root 3 over 2, which of course just flips that fraction in the denominator. So we have 2 over root 3. And of course, we don't want that radical in our final answer that's in the denominator. So let's rationalize, multiply by root 3 over root 3, and you'll get 2 square root 3 over 3. 
Of course, we know it's negative from that step two. And so the secant of 19 pi over six is negative two root three over three. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'll post a link to more worked examples of exact values using the Sark method. Um, so be sure to check that out and thanks for watching.